did you know that you can amend and resend HTTP traffic from within a browser? Well, you can. And in this video, we're going to show a quick comparative review of Safari, Chrome, Firefox, and Edge to see how they support us doing that. Now, amending and resending traffic is incredibly useful for testing or security testing because you take a request that was already sent and authenticated and has all the right headers, and then you just amend some details on it a header or the verb or some of the payload and then you can trigger new functionality or bypass the front-end validation you can do good manipulative testing doing this now normally i use a proxy for that but now the browsers can support me so let's have a quick look at how we can do that so let's start with chrome so i've got chrome i'm going to evotester.com i'm going to have a look at the uh, network tab so I do inspect to get the network tab up. Let me refresh this. Now I've got disable cache on to allow me to just refresh and see all the requests. So I'll pick one of these. Uh, in fact, let's do bootstrap, that's good. So in here, we do a get internal redirect. Let's pick this one. Okay, that's got some internal redirect. Okay, <clears throat> we've got a request that we're sending to bootstrap. Let's use that. So what we can do then, is I'm going to right click. Let's move this up so you can see the whole thing. Do a right click and there's nothing there that says resend the request. Now what I can do is I can block the URL. That's quite useful. If I select this, I really want to select that in the here. If I select that request, I do block the request URL then I refresh. So you can see that when I tried to get that image, we didn't get a response, right? It was blocked. So that's a useful way of testing how your site handles when certain things don't come back. Now that's not quite the same as an autoresponder in Fiddler that sends back a 404 or finding a different way of sending a request, but that can still be useful to see if your site can handle specific conditions. So let me get rid of the request blocking there. But what I really want to do is, let's make a request to bootstrap, that'll do. <clears throat> I can't just resend a request, but what I can do is I can copy as fetch, or I could copy as curl. Now if I copy as fetch, I can go into the console, do a control V, then I've got the fetch request, so I could issue a post on this if I wanted. Post, promise, method not allowed. So in the network tab now, right at the bottom, we should see, there we go, we issued a post request and we got a method not allowed back. And the reason I picked Bootstrap is it's, I like the header, x hello human, say hello back, get Bootstrap CDN on Twitter. You find um, amazing things when you start looking at the source code or you start looking at the actual requests that are coming back from servers, quite interesting. And this request has said, now you're not allowed to do a post, but you can do a head or a delete or a get or a put. A delete, I can do a delete on that? Why would I want to be able to do a delete on that? I'm not even going to try and do a delete on that just in case it does actually do a delete. We shouldn't really be allowed to do a delete on that method. That's really odd. Okay, that's Chrome. The other thing I can do is I could um, issue it as a curl. So if I copy it as a curl, get a terminal up, paste that in. You can see it's got a post request. Post request in there, so let's change that back to a get. Oops. And then we see the contents here. So I, I was able to do a reset, not quite the way that I want to in the browser, but Chrome has those two ways of letting me do a reset with the fetch or the, the curl. So that's that's useful. Now let's have a look then at Firefox. So this is Firefox. Again, I've got the evotest.com. I'm gonna do a network view. Then let's do the same thing with the bootstrap. Now, if I right click here, I can copy as curl again. That's good. So let me do that. Terminal up, paste that in. Since it's a get, I don't have to amend that. And we did a get, so that's quite useful. But what Firefox also does is it has the edit and reset, which is amazing. This is exactly what you would normally do in a uh, proxy you look at the request in the in the history look at take the request amend the values that are in here i can amend any of the headers i can change in here i can set this to be a, 
a post or a delete, then I can send it. And there we go, post the four or five response again. That's fantastic. Right? That's an actual, whatever request came in here, I edit it and resent it within the browser without needing a proxy, without needing any other tools. That's fantastic. So remember that functionality exists because a lot of people struggle with proxies, but this is a good way into HTTP uh, manipulation without having to use any extra tools. So let's have a quick look at Safari, see if Safari can help us. So in Safari, let's look at the inspect element and the network tab. Uh, so here we've got that. If I do a, so I can copy as curl again. Let me get that up and paste that. Now that's a very small um, curl request. Um, okay, minus x null. I wasn't expecting. Does that even work? No. What is this? Okay, so that didn't quite work out of the box as well as I was expecting. Was it just that because it was HTTP? Let me pick what we've been using, which is the CSS. Copy as curl, paste that in. Now maybe what I'm supposed to do then is change that. Then it works. So it's a partial curl. So I, I've never used that before. So that's kind of useful, not as intuitive as the rest of them, but at least it's supporting us. So let's have a look at Edge. In Edge, I've got the virtual machine up. So if I do inspect element again, and let's get the network tab up. Let's see what comes through. Okay, there we go. So that's working now. So there's bootstrap again. Do a get and so I can't actually do very much here. I can't copy as curl. I can copy the URL and copy the headers. That can be useful for documentation. Um, but And I could craft a curl request on that, but this isn't really helping me with that. So Edge is coming on the bottom here. Firefox is massively coming on top. But you can see that, again, with any browser, we could send it through a proxy. So we don't have to use the browser to do this. Um, it's great that they're starting to help us, but I would probably still use a proxy for observing, interrogating, and manipulating the HTTP traffic. But having that functionality in browsers is a really useful fallback for testing. If you've only got access to browsers because you're not allowed to install other tools, Firefox lets you do a lot more manipulation now. And it's a good reminder that this level of manipulation is now available to the home user. You don't need any extra tools in order to manipulate the HTTP requests. So if we are not testing at an HTTP traffic level for our application, right? not just only going through the GUI, we actually drop down, we look at the HTTP traffic, we send and manipulate HTTP traffic. If we're not doing that, then we have a coverage gap in our testing that a home user might be able to exploit. So experiment with these functionalities, see how you get on, it's worth learning this stuff. I cover much more about technical web testing, the techniques, the technologies, and the theory in my Technical Web Testing 101 online course. So if you found this video useful, then head over to compendiumdev.co.uk slash page slash online underscore training and learn about that. And you can support me on Patreon where I release a ton of exclusive content at patreon.com slash evil tester and remember to click the subscribe button and when you do set up the notifications and then youtube will let you know about any new videos that i add and i'll see you in the next video or pop over to eviltester.com and read all the information there thanks very much